Now, mobile money is gradually becoming a major means of payment for the unbanked and the underserved in Ghana. According to the 2017 Bank of Ghana report, mobile money has now overtaken uh, ac uh, access to formal banking. Only 34% of Ghanaians, we're told, have bank account. But 39% of Ghanaians have a mobile money account. Certainly about a 5% uh, uh, competition going on there so far. Now, the rapid growth in mobile money usage in Ghana is partly on account of increasing penetration and application of mobile phones, particularly in rural areas. What is it about mobile money that is driving a lot of people to patronize it? Is it current happenings in the banking sector? Is that the problem? Is, it, is that what's accounting for the growth of, of the use of mobile money platforms? Well, we have a financial consultant, Daniel Amate Enim, uh, joining us for the conversation. But before we even bring Daniel into the discussion, let's hear from a number of you who have been telling us how you use mobile money in this country. I feel that it's fast and convenient. And yes, it doesn't take a lot of your time because you would have to go to the bank, be in a queue to get your money. But then when it comes to mobile money, you can even be in the comfort of your home, do your transaction and then you get your money. So yes, I think I'll, I'll, every, I'll choose mobile money every day over going to the bank. Mobile money, instant, you can get it. To find the, I'll find the mobile money very good in the, in the sense that the mobile money has a lot of branches and it's, it's really re reliable. But with the banking system, because of the charges and other things in the banking system, it makes it very difficult for some of us to put our money in the bank. It's attractive because it's, it's easy go. If you come here, you withdraw money fast or you send money to somebody, it's fast than the bank. Because the bank, you sit, wait for a long queue, but this place is just only fast thing that we do. The thing is that when you get to the, uh, the place for the money, it's so easier than... Well, those are some of the people we spoke to on the streets telling us what they think. You can also send in your comments on our social media uh, platform. Join us on Facebook. Let us know what you think. I'll also be putting out our uh, WhatsApp number so you can send us your message. Or What, do you, how, what is it about uh, um, mobile money, uh, the usage of mobile money that attracts you so much? That's the question. What is it about mobile money that attracts you so much? And really, what do you think about the way we're using mobile money in this country? Can we harness it for something bigger, greater? You tell us. But let me engage Daniel. Daniel, you're welcome. It's good to have you. Thank you very okay. much for coming. Now, you've heard the reports I just read. They talk, were saying that about 39% of Ghanaians are using mobile money, whereas just 34% are having bank accounts now. What does this trend uh, mean for us as a country? What, what do you think? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it is basically uh, it's a signal that I, IT platform is driving the way people are mm. beginning to appreciate financial services. Uh, you recall that traditionally, uh, if you need money, you need to go to the bank, mm -hmm. you need to queue, and especially if you are not that, you cannot read and write the difficulty you go through uh, at the counter, having to interact with the, with the customer service personnel in the banking hall. Uh, but with the use of the, with the mobile money platform, it becomes very convenient for people, uh, regardless where you find yourself, provided you can have access to the network, mm -hmm. it becomes very convenient. Uh, you can be in the village, receive money from a friend, a family member, a business partner in the city, and vice versa. So the convenience of it, the ease of having access to money and using it to transact business yeah. is, is, is faster than that of the, of the, of the uh, commercial banks. So people prefer, uh, to, to, people prefer the mobile money platform as against going to the bank and queue before you can have access to your money. So it's technology that is driving the you change. You think that technology is driving and it. I but then what, what does it mean? Is it good or is it bad? Because what it means is that you have fewer people putting their money in banks. Based on what we have seen recently in, in about the banking sector, sure. I mean, what does the, what, does this go further to jeopardize banking in this country, or should we just say, well, this is a good thing, let's focus on it and actually focus more on uh, mobile banking? Sure. Look, my dear, it's about innovation. Okay, to me, it's a very good thing. It it's to me, it's an opportunity for the banks to to be innovative to come up with products that will ensure that they benefit from this trend. Uh, they shouldn't just sit there and say, oh, because of mobile bank, a lot of people prefer to you know, use the mobile money platform as against saving with them. Uh, because if you recall, at the end of the day, the money goes back to the bank in terms of mm. the quantum that this mobile 
telecoms operators have. But, but, but it's not the bank that's in charge of the money. Definitely. But what I'm saying is that the bank should be innovative enough to craft or devise product that will ensure that it will have connectivity with okay. mobile money platform. Okay. So it is about them to, to innovate mm. and then partner with the telecoms so that they can devise products. Okay, so that will allow people to save with them and as well as use this platform. So to me, it calls for innovation. Okay. Uh, so they really need to think critically okay. outside the box and come up with product that will ensure that okay. once I'm using the, uh, the mobile money platform, I'm equally connected to my service account mm -hmm. in, in whatever financial institution. Look, if you look at it, uh, you know, they should, by now they should be thinking about dev devising a savings and investment product. Mm -hmm. and link it to mobile money platform. So for instance, it's not just a matter of loading my wallet, but I can load it and after a month, if, 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 if I fail to withdraw a certain amount of a month, I'm, I'm likely to attract a certain percentage, right? So the, the banks should immediately devise product, innovative product, and get in touch with the telecos, okay? I and think some of them are some of some of them are actually doing it, yeah. but maybe it's about the rates at which, like how many people are doing it. Some are doing it, but obviously not every everybody. One of the key issues that have come up is regulating the sector, because now it was uncharted path. People were not doing it, so all of a sudden someone is doing it. So we don't even know whether there are laws that can regulate. The other, do you know of any laws that regulate mobile money, you know, transactions? Uh, no, no, not really. But no. what, the, what I know is that the, the telecos have, you know, registered with the, the regulator. Mm -hmm. So they were given permit to, okay. to run. Yeah. Because, you know, anytime there's an exchange of money, if you are collecting money from people, whether you are using an IT platform or any other traditional model, mm. you are likely to get a permit from the regulator. That one, I'm, I'm sure they, they've done that with the, with the regulator. But as to whether there's a law that will ensure that the, 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 the sector is well regulated, uh, I think it is a debate that is ongoing. Because if you recall, uh, we government is looking even at the way of taxing uh, this mobile money. How, how, how can government tax? Actually, they're looking at doing that. And people have said that they're looking at the way people are using tax, uh, um, mobile money, if we should tax you know the usage will make a lot of money but how can that be done no it's, it's possible it's a matter of maybe for instance if in a month okay you transfer so let's say thousand ghana cities mm -hmm. maybe out of that thousand ghana cities two cities of it belongs to the state so you just multiply by the number of transfers in that quantum mm. and then that money will be transferred from the telecos to the gre so it is a very simple thing provided it's something that will be acceptable i think connecting mm -hmm. Uh, having a system that will ensure that the money is collected it will not be of any difficulty at but all. But then there was another issue about overtaxing people because the people who are sending money to their relatives in the villages, so basically I think you're going to be taxed if you are the sender. Sure. So you are the sender, the receiver is your grandmother in the village. First of all, even if you're taxing the receiver, it could be wrong because if it's an aged person, an old person who doesn't work, they're making small money and you want to tax them, that's a bit immoral. That's one. Secondly, if you're taxing me, the sender, because I'm working and I'm making money, you are paying, you're taking taxes on my salary and then you're taking taxes on, on, on the payment of, my, on my payment of remittances to my family. How is that fair? No, you are absolutely correct because what you are saying is out of your disposable income for which you've already paid tax. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm of the view that the telecos rather should be taxed. Because if you look at it, whatever transfer that is, is done, they, they collect a fee, either two CDs, five CDs, depending on the quantum. Mm -hmm. So it is the telecos that the government, if any, if they, they intend taxing the system, the, the mobile money platform, they should rather focus on the telecos, right? But there again, they also have a way of transferring that tax to we the consumers of the platform. Of course. So, so, so that, that's the, 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 the difficulty. So in that case, <laughs> what will be your suggestion? Do you have any suggestion, I mean, as to how governments can strike that, what looks to me like a very delicate balance? Uh, to me, uh, governments should hold on and allow uh, people to be consumed by the use of mobile money tr uh, platform, where <laughs> eventually, just like the mobile that's phone. That's like setting a trap. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so it's wait no, and then... Yes, when people, it becomes like a norm. I mean, we cannot live without it. Uh, and then when you step in with something, uh, a minimal rate, uh, people, the citizens will not complain so much, okay? okay? Because it's now that we are getting used to the system. If you 
rush and start testing the system. If you are not careful, people will people recall, withdraw. Yeah, when withdraw then we'll, then we'll go back to definitely. That, that sends me to my next question, which is about looking at what's happening the, within the bank sector. Uh, what people, I, I mean, I, I'd like to pick your thoughts on what you think people will be doing. Some have said that because the Bank of Ghana stepped in to, to save the banks, in essence, we, we do not have people losing their investment, that it was good, that it's actually boosting people's confidence and they're saying, oh, so after all, even if a bank collapses, the Bank of Ghana can step in and save them, then let me take my money to the bank. But some are also saying that, look, people are not even listening to the message, they don't, they don't understand. All they know is that some banks, banks have collapsed, it is a bad thing, monies have been lost, they're saying, look, I'm taking my money nowhere near the bank. Yeah, you are right. Uh, I have some uh, clients, you know, uh, in the SME center, uh, sector. When an incident crop up and I, I receive a call from them, they say, no, they're going to withdraw their money. I told them, no, hold on, everything is okay. They, do you know what the woman said? Look, mm -hmm. they said, young man, if at the end of the day I should lose your money, you'll be held liable because you are telling me that everything I is safe. So I should you know, put my money there. I told you, no, relax, everything is cool. Our Bank of Ghana has taken over and uh, your investment is safe. You know, because we're trying to encourage financial inclusiveness. Uh, we try to encourage people sending their excess liquidity mm -hmm. to the banks for on one lending for businesses right. so that we can respond to the expansion in, in our, our domestic economy. Because the only way government can borrow and businesses can borrow from the banks is when the banks have excess liquidity from the citizens for okay. onward lending. Okay. So it's, it's very I'll come back to All you. Right. I'll come back to you for some more of your comments. But I, I've been waiting to get your, your comments on this one. 050-564-330. And uh, apologies that we're putting out the number a bit late because sometimes by the time you send in the message, we're done with the discussion and we're unable to go back to it. But it's 050 that's just on your screen as we speak at zero five zero uh five zero six four three three zero okay so let's know what you think what is it about mobile money that attracts you so and what does what, what do you make of the spike we're having in mobile money operations and those who use it let's hear from deputy finance minister kweku kwating on what he makes of this it's early days yet uh, most of the measures started beginning of uh, august and so uh, we, are, we, are, we are monitoring, but we, we, are, we hope they'll go well and give us the revenue we need. Just a quick backtrack because of TVN. For you, the understanding is that so we should not anticipate that more money, you're going to tax more money right now. Well, what I can say is that if we wanted to tax uh, mobile money, we would have introduced those in the media review. So that we didn't introduce to suggest to you that it is not a decision government has made. But we are continuing to monitor the economy. And um, if going forward, government finds it necessary at all to consider any taxation in the mobile money space, we will do so taking into account the many concerns that have been shared here. And more importantly, taking into account government's own policy to promote a cashless society. Deputy Finance Minister Kweku Kwating there. Let's wrap up this conversation uh, and, and look at the future of mobile money. Um, Daniel, wh what do you see will be the future of this enterprise that we're seeing grow so big and how can we use it for? Uh, was it commerce? Yeah, I think the future is, is bright and it's going to drive the local economy. I've done some few studies at the local level and you, you recall that this time around instead of people moving from the villages to the city to buy in goods, what mm -hmm. they do now is that getting the, the number of their supplier, mm -hmm. send the money to him and the goods is delivered to their driver I see. for onward delivery. I see. Making business very flexible, the ease of doing business is very great. At any point in time they need a product, you don't need to, actually the study was done at the Adan East and Adan West District. Okay. So they normally buy from Tema and Accra. So it's a matter of calling the supplier there. And then the, the, once you, you wire the, the, money. the money, the good is delivered. I see. You can be in the market and then early in the morning when you see the change in terms of people buying and you realize that you have less stock, you can just call. Once you, you wire the money to your supplier, the supplier delivers the good within two, three hours. You have your product and you keep on saying, rather than leaving what you're selling, a rush to a crowd, by the time you return, the market is over. So okay. it's, it's, it's a means of boosting the local economy. So we need to encourage that and so that at the end of the day jobs could be created at that local level 
and the standard of living will be improved. Okay, so let's use this to improve the standard of living, but you also have to look out because there are frosters out there. Definitely. You also have to be very <laughs> careful uh, about the security of yeah. your pain and everything because there are frosters out there. So I got this message from, and once again, I apologize, I will put the number out too late, but we have several things we're going to talk about. You can send your messages through that. On mobile money, this one says, I am uh, Aleb Yeta Ernest. He says that this tax on Momo will be transferred back to we, the clients. That obviously has been the greatest fear of all of us. But let me say a very big thanks to you, Daniel, for coming. Daniel Amate is a financial consultant uh, speaking about mobile money, the prospects, uh, what we can do with it in the future. Daniel, have a very great weekend. You too. Certainly, you certainly. <laughs> Well, you're still watching the polls. Let me quickly tell you about the Joy News uh, Western World Habitat Fair. Uh, it is coming off, well, the, one of the mini clinics is coming off tomorrow at the West Hills Mall. You want to make your way there. We're starting at 8 a.m. Western World Property, the, the Habitat Fair is brought to you by Western World Properties. Uh, live your true comfort, elegant homes and general construction where you live your dream. Zenith City, the new airport city. Fortune City Estate, they say it's not just a home, they give you a safe investment. Castle Steel Structures Limited, Dream It, We Build It, JL Properties, the city's favorite developer, uh, DBS Roofing, Roofing Papa Parfier, MNC Properties, a choice of class, Millennium Insurance, your trustworthy insurer, and Energy Commission, Unlocking Ghana's Renewable Energy potential. It is indeed the Joy Habitat Fair uh, in collaboration with Western World. Go there, look at the uh, opportunities that are available for you to own your own home. I'll remind you again along the line.